All right, so it seems like we're actually getting a new Ghostface update. I was actually expecting the worst and prepared for it, but luckily and surprisingly, these changes were actually pretty solid in my opinion. I probably should have waited for the rest of the add-on changes to come out before making this, but it doesn't really matter. So the majority of these changes are pretty good for the way I play, and they're not like too broken or anything, and they're not completely out of the line with the character. They're just small changes that I think will make a pretty solid difference in my playstyle. So starting with the increased mark du duration from 45 to 60 seconds, I think that is actually a pretty helpful change. Like, I'm not going to be chasing someone for a whole minute, of course, but it'll be really helpful for doing better baits and stuff. Like, you can mark someone and they'll be out of commission for a longer time than pre-patch. Especially since um, a hook phase takes 60 seconds, so if you were doing a bait while someone was on the hook, you can pretty much guarantee that that marked person won't go for the hook to save, or they'll be unable to at least. This also ties in with the other change where marked survivors will no longer be able to reveal you, which was pretty unexpected, but I think it's still a pretty decent change as well. Like, against decent teams, you might have one player uh, guarding the other survivors while trying to reveal you as they're doing a gen, and that can really hurt you at times, so this is a nice small change to help alleviate that. As well as it also helps um, you when you get zoned out into a corner and there's someone ready to reveal you on the other side. Even though you should try and not get zoned out in the first place like that. but. See, against good teams, you're still supposed to stay hidden completely, otherwise they'll still be able to call you out and the survivors will just run away whether you're actually revealed or not, so it's not completely broken and you still have to actually stay hidden in order to actually down good players. Likewise, if someone's following you when you're trying to stalk someone, you could simply mark them and buy yourself some time. So there's a lot of things you can do with that um, new ability. As for the add-ons, I actually don't care too much for the drop leg knife sheath update, which lets you be faster when you mark someone. Like I don't really try to chase too much as ghosty, so it probably won't make that much of a difference to my playstyle, but I think it's uh, not super significant as it's only 5 seconds and it might help close some chases that will be difficult to otherwise, so it's pretty solid. As for the wallet change, I think it actually makes the wallet one of his best add-ons. Like, you don't actually have to break a lot of pallets with Ghostface, you can leave a good amount of them up and go marking down someone without actually having to chase them. It's also helpful when slugging, like you could uh, down someone, then break a pallet or a wall that you left up and then go down someone else. And this will be pretty game ending, especially when you've already killed one person. Like you should be able to slug three people and end the match at that point. And it could also uh, create some interesting new strats when everyone's still alive that I have yet to explore, but will learn about those one day. But I think you could honestly ditch the other recovery add-ons and just slap on a wallet. Which is a shame because I've been avoiding wallets my entire Ghostface career, so I'm, I probably should start hoarding them again. But yeah, I do hope to see the other add-on changes behavior has planned for us, though I hope none of them are too game-breaking or gimmicky. Like, I don't want it to debate from the core concept of Gil's phase as a killer, you know? But yeah, we'll see when the patch comes out, as well as the new Haddonfield changes, which could be pretty interesting. The map looks pretty good, in my opinion. Oh, also, the Hammerhodge changes were announced. I don't think it'll make that big of a difference to Ghosty, especially as with the majority of killers actually. 
Like when you're interrupting someone healing, you actually want to down them rather than just let their heal progress regress over time. So it's a little counterintuitive in that sense. And healing doesn't really take that long anyway. And there's also a circle of healing, so yeah, you probably won't get too much use out of that unless you're like nurse on the game with chlorophobia or some full anti-heal build. I don't see much use of um, the healing regressing over time. But yeah, maybe maybe someone will think of something, but I just can't see anything useful coming out of that right now. So protecting this gen was probably a mistake. I probably should have searched, uh, looked for Michaela or follow up with Yunjin, though even though I plan to do that later anyway. Because I knew the boon was near that gen by the jungle gym and she'd probably come back to this gen, but it would be a little more efficient. And you have to be very efficient on this map. And if this were a swift, they'd likely be calling out my location to the Yunjin and make it a lot harder. <laughs> it's a good thing they missed that pallet stun. I probably would have lost otherwise, but... Yeah, that going after the capture gen was probably a bad idea. The game's still mostly in my favor though, because it seems like no one has any significant progress on one of these gens since we just saw Dwight and Nia finish the Kausha gen, and as with Michaela. So as Ghosty, um, with three survivors and one gen remaining, it's still in your favor as long as there isn't significant progress on a gen. So I should still be able to win this match in theory. Here I just have to pay attention to the discordance turning off, and if it doesn't, then just go and down Michaela. And but if it does, I probably have to proxy camp and mark and down one of the people running for the save. If Michaela goes for the save, she dies. But she didn't actually go for the save, and that was a big mistake on my part. So I just have to wait here and guard while Dwight ideally goes back and finishes that gen. And so the match is probably in their favor at this point, unless I can down one of these people quickly. If there wasn't Korn here, I, it'd be really hard to stalk him without him revealing, but you can do things like that with how hard it is to break Ghosty out in the Korn. Nia might have stayed behind to pick him up, which was probably the best move in that case, again. So as long as they find a safe place to heal, they should be... 
at least one of them should escape. But it seems like they go right for the gate. Deliverance is why you should try avoiding hooking people, you know, rescued someone. But if he has GS, then I can't hook him here. But he seems to be crawling away from it, so he might not actually have it. So I guess we'll see. This match was way too close. Um, I definitely messed up in the middle where I went for the wrong gen, and that's why you need to plan a couple of successive downs ahead before actually downing someone. But yeah, hope you enjoyed, and hope you all like the ghost face changes. I hope I do, at least. But yeah, good luck, and I will see you in the next one.